Welcome back to the Wood Grafter. This video, we're going to be looking at a new tool from benchdog.co.uk, the Parallel Guide System. That sounds good. Stick around. Hi, January 2021 and benchdogs.co.uk have just brought on sale a new product, the Parallel Guide System. Now, if you don't know what the Parallel Guide System is about, if you're a person who uses track saws and these sort of track rails in your workshop or your production, and you regularly use sheet goods, then the Parallel Guide System allows you to make fast, accurate, repeatable cuts over and over and over again. So imagine a large full-size sheet of MDF and you need to break it down to consistent strips. That's exactly what the Parallel Guide System does for you. First brought onto the market by Festool many years ago and now there's a number of products on the market much cheaper, arguably faster and more accurate than the Festool one and benchdogs.co.uk have entered the fray. This is what we get in the kit. Now this is a pre-production kit, so the one you'll get will be slightly different, but essentially they're the same thing. Each kit comes with a couple of aluminium extrusions that are one meter in length, and they're calibrated from 20 up to 118 with a bit either end. Now the kit that you now buy from benchdogs.co.uk will actually provide this to you in three chunks, so size is more like this one. And the kit also comes with six of these joining clamps that simply allow you to connect these rods together to give you these long extrusions. Now that's quite a good idea because it makes the entire system incredibly compact. So if you're using this in the field, that's the sort of size of the kit you're gonna get. Six of those, easy to store in your toolbox. You're going to get two of these. These are the track mounting brackets. They allow you to attach your rails to your track saw. We'll look at that shortly. These are milled aluminium. Comes with two nylon M6 knurled nuts that allow you to actually fasten it to the bracket itself. A couple of T-bolts and a couple of associated bolts so you can attach this to the T-track on the underside of this rail. You get two of those. You're also going to get two of these 3D printed stops that allows you to position and set a size. You'll see those in use shortly. You're going to get six of these connectors, which allows you to connect your rails together to make these long extrusions. Now on the shorter rails that you get in the kit, the 20 millimeter ones, on the back of these, you have quite a clever feature, a narrow cut guide. That allows you to make cuts on material that's narrower than your track saw. And we'll put that through its paces and look at that shortly. So job one in your kit is you're going to connect your rails together. It's no harder than taking the supplied brackets, dropping those into the rail, coming in with a two and a half millimeter Allen wrench that's not supplied in the kit, and just locking that into place. Bringing the second extrusion up, slot that into place, make sure it all lines up, and lock it in. And then that gives you uh, the rail that you're looking for. So job one, assemble your rails so you get the two lengths I've got here. Now the next job is to take these brackets and attach them to the assemblies that you've just made. Now these are three millimeters. Again, it's not provided as an Allen key inside the kit, but it's the same size as the one that you would get in the benchdogs.co.uk rail square if you purchase that kit. If not, any three millimeter drive will do. Simply loosen off the nuts at the back. Coming from the 20 centimeter end, the 200 mil, not the 118 um, centimeter end. And they simply line up and go into those slots on the back of the rail. One. Two. Slide the rail all the way to the end so it's touching the other part of the aluminum extrusion. Turn it over and just loosely tighten those down. Now the design of that rail, if you actually look at it, you can see it's got this slot inside here, and that actually helps that to pull square. When it tightens up, it all pulls square inside that channel, and that gives you a degree of accuracy. Do the same on the second one. 
So coming with your rail, I'm using the 1400 millimeter rail from Festool. This will work on any length of rail, so it's going to work on my long rail, my holy rail, my short rails, and any other rails that you've got. And it will work with Festool, Makita and Triton systems. We're looking for this rail at the back, and then this bracket here just simply slots into that rail, like so. And slides down to wherever you need it. And then once it's in there, press it firmly down with your finger and just nip up these plastic nylon bolts. Now, if you do this on a flat surface, like I've got this piece of MDF and hold it down, these nylon bolts work really, really well. If you're doing this at an angle and you're trying to do this unsupported, I find there's not enough torque in those to pull it all into square. And you don't want to be banging down on these nylon nuts because my feeling is that they'll probably break. But lay it flat on a surface, they do the job perfectly. Just something to watch out for. And take the second one. And slide that into place as well. Hold it down and lock it into place. Obviously, you're going to space those out more than I have there. That's purely so you can see it on, on the camera. But you can get the idea. We then take our guide stops and slot those onto the rail, like so. And I'm just going to bring that up to the 50 centimetre mark. And just lock it down. And the same here. No reason why I've gone to 50, just I like the number. So the idea is you take your stock, you bring those stops up to the end of your board, and the distance between your cutting edge and that mark there is 500 millimeters, 50 centimeters. So I can now make a cut, I can cut my board, I can go up to that end I've just cut, make a cut, cut the board, and those pieces will be bang on 500. That's a promise in the theory behind the parallel guides. Now at this point, you're gonna to have to calibrate your parallel guides to your rail system. And that's not a fault in the system, that's more to do with how track saws are used. No matter what system you're using, Makita, Festool, Triton, they all have a strip down the edge of the track, and on the Festool one, it's a hard, clearish nylon strip. And what you do when you first use your rail, you initiate your rail, you put your track saw on it, and you run your track saw down, and it cuts through that nylon strip. Now that means that the nylon strip is always going to be flush against your blade, giving you a zero clearance cutting mark. That's part of the feature of the track saw. Now if you're using Festool and you're using standard Festool blades, then each of their blades is 2.3 millimeters thick. So there's a very, very good chance that most Festool rails are the same. But I use a third party blade on my Festool track saw and therefore it may not be guaranteed to be 2.3. You might use a different blade, so the distance between this back edge here and your cutting edge is gonna vary by a few thousand of a millimeter, not a lot, but it will vary. So therefore we need to be able to calibrate these to the system. Now Ralph over at benchdogs.co.uk has really invested in his machining and his tooling and he's recently purchased an engraving system and all this is now etched and engraved. And he's also got a laser calibration, so everything that he makes, he now checks. That could be the Mark II fence system, or it could be this system here. These are all the same. And I know, because I've measured everything, that the rulers I buy tend to be precision rules that are guaranteed. And I know that if I come in at that 20 millimeter mark on my rule there, I know this is gonna be bang on calibrated. And if I come down here, all these are lining up. So at the 600 mark, it's bang on there in the same way that's bang on there. And all my rules in my workshop are all calibrated and set against the same single source of truth. So I know that everything measures the same. Now, because of that, I can use one of my steel rules to calibrate this. Now that's worth checking that the measuring devices in your workshop all actually read the same. They're not all made equally and you will see variance on it. I deliberately make sure that all mine are okay, and if it's not the same, I don't use it for measuring. Might be a great straight edge, but they're not used for measuring. So this is all calibrated together. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reset that to 50, because we just moved it there. I'm gonna slide my ruler in till it hits that stop. I'm going to make sure that this is parallel enough 
to the uh, the bench dogs rule and I'm going to look at this end here and can you see it's about a millimeter out so although that's reading 500 millimeters at this end here I've actually got a cut distance of 490 millimeters which may be good enough for what you want to do but for me in my workshop as you know I like precision so I'm going to calibrate this so I'm going to take this one first and I'm going to turn it over <sighs> I'm going to loosen off these two nuts that we didn't quite tighten down before. See that? And that now slides in and out. It's not going too far because we'll put it out of that T nut, but you get the idea. Now I'm going to put this on here like this. And very gently, just going to get my hammer. I'm just going to tap it here. There. And that is now bang on 500. So now I'm going to lock that one in. And this time I'm going to lock it down pretty tightly so I don't want it moving. Cool. Well, now remember this one here is calibrated. The one there is smooth, just calibrated. Just going to check myself, make sure we're happy with that. Yeah, and that is now bang on 500. Tick. Now what I'm going to do next, I'm just going to bring up this second rail Oof. to close proximity to the first, as close as I can get it, and just lock it into place again. And I'm just going to make sure that this here is bang on the 500 mark in the same way that this one is, like so. And remember this one we've calibrated, so I'm just going to loosen off the other one. And slide it ever so slightly backwards. Now I'm going to come in with a square that I trust, and I'm going to bring that square up so it's resting on this stop. And then I'm just going to push that in until this stop rests on my square and then I'm going to lock that into place nice and tight check myself yep lock it down Now I know that both of these should be reading the same. So I now come with my ruler on the other one we just calibrated, put it up to there, bang on 500. So that's it. So these are now calibrated for my rail. Now calibration is pretty much a one-time deal and it's super easy to calibrate as you, as you saw. And once it's calibrated, it's pretty much locked in forever. I would caution you to check it now and then as part of your workshop uh, routine. Just bang it into a known point to just measure the distance to the end of your cutting surface. And if you do buy a new track and you've initiated a new track and you're going to use it, definitely just check the calibration at that point. And if you switch between brands of track, also recalibrate it as you go. But for me, I'm locked into the Festool system. It's the same blade, the same track on all of this. So I'm confident my calibration here is going to work on all my collection of tracks. And I think it will be a good check for the system to prove that. So we're going to put it through its paces. I'm going to drop off this track for the 1400 track. And I'm going to bring in my shorter track, my 1080 track. And we're going to cut this piece of board here into a number of chunks. I've just dropped in a couple of scrap bits of MDF for no other reason than to protect my bench. Now I'm just going to bring these together, first of all, and just push, lock them down loosely onto my rail. And I want to make a cut of 300 millimeters. So I'm going to bring in my stop, sir. To 300 millimeters and 
there. I'm just going to use my little square trick again to make sure that they're both at the same point. 300 and 300. And now I can separate these now they're the same. And position one towards each side of the board, not critical. Press down and lock in those guides. And I'll just push it forward a little bit to make sure that that and that are now firm. And now I can just go ahead and make a cut with a convenient track saw. Now you can see straight away that these brackets are pretty low profile. You've not got huge sticky up knobs here and that so the track saw clears quite happily. Make sure I can get all the way through the cut. Set this for a cut of 12 millimeters. Let's make a cut and see what we get. Now obviously these don't interfere with the clamping facility of the track so if you wanted to clamp underneath to give yourself even more accuracy and precision then of course you could i'm not going to do that for this test now i can just slide the board down without recessing anything i can now bring this track in again Make sure it's all nice and flush to the end. Bring in the tracks up. Make sure I'm looking good. And there you go, and that's the promise of a parallel guide system. That you can quickly set it up once and break down the boards multiple times. And what you should have, which is what we do have, is all those should be perfectly the same size. And they are, they are all perfectly, my gosh, in fact, impressively perfectly same size. Wow, that's really, really impressive. So that is super, super accurate, which is what we want, of course. In terms of size, this top one here is 300, and down here it is 300. Yep. So they're parallel as well. So in terms of parallel guides, where you want to get those fast repeatable cuts right across the panel, all the same size, all parallel, it does its job. So you can't really argue with that. It does what it says on the tin. And I am pretty impressed with that. Pretty impressed with that. Good. Now I can just about get the stop onto the 1,180 millimeter mark. So that's the maximum capacity of this system out of the box. When you compare that to a 3360 by 2440 from memory standard MDF sheet, it won't quite reach in to the middle. So just bear that in mind with the system. But if you're cutting anything less than that capacity, then you're in pretty good shape. Now, don't forget, we could always take some of these extension bars and add them to the end. And as long as we're measuring that precisely, then really it's an unlimited cut that we can go for. So you can extend the capacity of this one, but the kit as it comes has that 1,180 maximum depth of cut. Now, most of the sheets that I buy in my shop are 2,440 uh, by 1,220. So this system out of the box is a perfect size for that panel for what I need. Now then, if we look at the other important measurement, the shortest cut that this can make is 240. Now I've got a project coming up and it's just a very, very simple MDF keepsake box, but it's got an oak top on it that's all nicely engraved. Give the CNC a run for its money. 
but the size, the height of the MDF at the size is 120 millimeters. So this system in the configuration won't do that for me. It's 240 millimeters. But the kit has got a trick up its sleeve. Now don't forget that when you buy the kit, it's gonna come with a number of these to make up the overall length. And the piece that starts at the 20 centimeter mark has a scale on the back, and this is called the narrow cut guide. Now these cut guides are designed to slide under the rail. And in theory, I can make a cut all the way down to the edge and just pull this backwards. So in theory, I can use these to give me the cut. Let's set these up, let's calibrate them and see how it goes. So we're just gonna drop this off the rail. And then you're gonna drop out these completely. So sort the T-nuts come off. And you're going to reverse that so the T-nut is now on the other side, like so. And these still go on the rail in exactly the same way as we had before. And if you look at these, they've got the benchdogs.co.uk logo, so they've got some empty space in terms of measurements, and then it starts at zero and goes through to about 236 millimetres, or 237 millimetres. Take the end with the 237 millimetres on it and slide that onto this bracket, if I can get it lined up, and just loosely line that up. Repeat with this one. Now, if you loosen off these nuts, you can actually slide this out now. So if I want to cut of 120 millimetres or 12 centimetres, I slide this out till I get to that 12 mark and I can lock that one down on that gauge. And then what that's done, that's actually set these measuring points here back from this cut 120. And we should be able to prove that by just measuring it more or less. And you can see it's coming in at round about 120. Now I've got a problem with this system. There's no calibration on this. And in reality, that's 120.5. And this one is 120.5 as well. So it's consistently out of calibration. I've got 120 on here. The gap's 120.5. So if that's critical to you, what I would do, I would come in with a square and I would set my square at that 120 mark that you're looking for. So I'd come in with a square. So personally, I'd come in with a square and I'd set that square to 120, like so, lock it in. And rather than relying on the calibrator gauge, I just I would use my square, make sure it's not in that cut mark, in my square, just to bring that up, and then I'd lock, I'd lock that in. And now I know that that is bang on 120, but more importantly, I know that these two are going to be the same. And although that feels a little bit of a, a faff, once it's in, it's in. So now it's no harder than bringing in the board, pushing it hard again to the stops that are now underneath there, and I can go ahead and make my cuts and it should come out at 120. Let's try that. And that should now give me a piece of stock that is indeed, bang on, 120. So quite a simple solution to give this a capacity of a zero cut all the way through to that 1180 capacity that we saw earlier on so good stuff now you're probably already ahead of me because I took these rails off these are no longer calibrated and you're right so actually although that's a simple solution in my workflow that could give me some problems because now I've got to calibrate this thing I'll make the long cuts to rip it down then bring it in the smaller cuts to tuning for the project that I want I've got to take it apart and then it's out of calibration so I need to recalibrate it now and I was thinking about that and I'm wondering whether we need to worry about this system at all. And this is nothing to do with benchdogs.co.uk. It's just me playing around with my thought process. So I'm going to drop it back in to its original configuration with the long rails on it. Oh dear, that's tight. Okay. 
So one of those bits of stock that we cut to 300, I've just dropped back in underneath here. Now I'm just making sure everything's still looking 300-ish, and it is, it all still looks reasonably calibrated. Now, we were looking to cut some stock down to 120 from memory, yeah, 120. So here's an alternative thought for you. Rather than recalibrating, taking those apart and dropping the under rail supports on, that do work, I mean, to be fair to the system, it does work. I'm going to add 120 to 300. So 120 onto 300 is 420. So I'm going to set this to 420. 420. Make sure they look more or less the same. Now with both of those set to 420, the gap between the end of the board that we've cut, the 300 board, and the edge of the machine should be 120. And look at that. That comes out nice and flush on the end. So, without having to recalibrate my system, I can just make an underboard piece in that way. In theory, I now have two boards that are exactly the same, and when you look at that, I have. So you can pop over to the benchdogs.co.uk. It's now January 2021. These are going to start shipping from the 15th of February 2021, which is why I have a I have a pre-release version uh, to talk to you about and demonstrate. You're going to get the parallel guide adapters. You're going to get the rails. Remember, yours are going to come in three chunks. Six of these connections to connect your rail together. You're going to get the two blocks, uh, your stop blocks. The retail price is going to be £120, including VAT, and you can get that in a metric or an imperial system. If you pre-order, it's actually on offer uh, to £100 rather than the £120 that you're looking for. So there you go, I have nothing else to say. That's the benchdogs.co.uk parallel guide system. It does the job, it's a super repeatable, accurate cut. I've used it a little bit in the workshop now and I am getting consistent results from it. I'm not a fan of the under system. It does work for those narrower cuts. I just think a piece of board in the way that we looked at does the job equally well, a lot quicker, and you don't need to recalibrate. If you're gonna buy it, it's 120 pounds, 100 pound if you do a pre-order on it. Use the code the Wood Grafter at checkout and you'll get 5% off your purchase price for anything on the Bench Dogs website, not just this system. Now I know I'm going to get asked how does that compare with the Festool system, so look out for a future video where I will bring the two together, we'll contrast them, compare them and see which one is the best bang for our woodworking book. Hope you found it useful, I'll see you soon on the Wood Grafter. Yeah.